Hi, my name's Steve, and welcome to Christianity Out Loud. This is uh, video number eight. So it's actually a, uh, well, I was going to say a fair bit of a catalogue being developed, but uh, there's a bit of a catalogue being developed. So uh, if this is your first time, go back and, and watch from the start and uh, see what all this is about and what I'm trying to do here. Um, if you like it, uh, maybe subscribe because uh, you get the notification when uh, any one of these videos uh, pops up, or weekly words, as I'm calling them. Uh, that would be really great. I appreciate that. So, so for this one, I've got something just a little bit different. Um, as the label, or the headline, heading, whatever you want to call it, suggests, uh, there's wisdom from a heavy metal band, and a story about a little dog named Ruby. And we'll start with the little dog. So Ruby was a Kelpie cross something. Um, not really sure what, but uh, a lot of Kelpie. And she was fostered when she was about seven or eight weeks. So very young, very young pup. She went to ended up staying with a family with another dog and uh, two children, two young children. And they got along very well. It was a very good uh, place for her. She seemed to fit in uh, very well. Uh, and as it happens, the, uh, that particular family, uh, if you're not familiar with the fostering process, you get people in to see if they'll take the dog to be the forever owners of the dog. Um, and uh, these particular foster carers uh, decided that they would actually adopt Ruby. So, still young, Ruby was adopted by this family. Um, and she was a sweet, sweet dog, but had just had a, ten a tendency to get a little bit anxious about things and about life. If you hadn't worked out, yes, of course, that family that adopted you was, was us. That was, that was me, we were the family. So she was a sweet, she was a sweet dog. Got along very well with her other dog. But the older she got, the more the anxious tendencies seemed to, to manifest. She was nervous around other dogs, uh, nervous around noise, nervous around children that made a lot of noise and wanted to just go and give her a pat and love her and cuddle her and do all the things that children do with puppies. Nothing aggressive, nothing aggressive, just nervous. You could see it in her eyes, she got nervous and didn't quite know what to do. And it's gotten worse as so she got older. And anyway, it culminated in actually um, in a bit of a serious you know, incident with uh, her and one of our friends, dogs, that um, Ruby instigated it. Just again, the nervousness and anxiety got better of her. And uh, unfortunately, my daughter ended up in the middle. So that was a trip to hospital with a puncture wound in the leg and bruises and all of that. And again, it was not deliberate why Ruby out of it. It was just the anxiety got the better of her and my daughter was just happened to be crying. So one event, okay, we do something about it. Well, what can we do about it? So we try a few things at home, try the training, more intense training. We try walking and trying to get her used to other dogs. And it just never quite worked. And it all got the better of her at an off-leash dog park not far from where I live. And her and another dog ended up 
in uh, any disagreement, shall we say. Um, none got hurt, but again, you could just tell it was her anxiety that got the better of her. And she got to a point where she never really settled at home. She wasn't settling here. If we let her in, she would pace the house. Nor was just always seeking reassurance. Same outside. And then uh, it was only a few weekends ago where, again, the nervousness and anxiety just got the better of her and she she went for another dog who was being walked by a young boy, probably 10, 11 years old. It was only by luck that, um, that we got there and no animals or people were hurt. So at that point, we then had a fairly serious conversation with our vet, who was a wonderful vet. And after a fairly long consultation, uh, it's fairly obvious that you know, the step that we needed to take, because she was not enjoying her life, she was not a happy dog, she was always on edge. Unfortunately, the step that needed to be taken was to have her put down. So I go to the vet and again I'm trying to find a reason not to do this because I really didn't want to do it. Uh, but after a fairly long consultation, um, again the answer is unfortunately clear. So they take take her out to put the cannula. I think they call it, in the vein, and they bring her back in, put a rug on the floor, now for the liver treats, and then it's time for, um, time for it to happen. So I sit down on the rug, I, I cuddle Ruby, really, because she's only little, I cuddle her, and there's the vet starts to inject uh, the stuff. Really slowly she gets, her body gets just quite relaxed. And, you know, I just let down and I kiss her on the nose. I'm going to remain professional. I kissed her on the nose and I, I just said, so we go. So that was the last thing I said was so. And then she passed. And I will remain professional throughout this. So why did I why did I tell that story? Well, Ruby had bad anxiety. She had very bad anxiety. And looking back at her life, it's it would be a reasonable assumption to make that her mother suffered trauma while pregnant. So Ruby and the other siblings, I can't remember how many there were, um, were traumatised and suffered trauma whilst still in the work pre work And we know what that does to people. We understand that. So same sort of principle I imagine applies to animals. Anxiety. An August headline from the ABC. So who knows what narrative uh, or game they're trying to play. But, and I'll quote, Lifeline records highest daily calls on record as lockdown exacerbates loneliness, hardship. Continuing from that article, the support service saw Monday, 3rd of August, service 3,345 calls, which is the highest daily number in the organization's history. 
anxiety. Why the levels of anxiety? Well, this actually brings me to the wisdom from a heavy metal band. Now, I don't know why I need to preface that with anything, because there's no reason why being in any sort of rock band means you can't be intelligent or intellectual or have profound thoughts or statements at times. Um, so the band, Slipknot. And the song, their latest song called The Chapel Town Rag. I don't know what that headline means, but the line were screamed repeatedly towards the end of the song is when everything is God online, nothing is. Now think about that for me. When everything is God online, nothing is. So we are living currently in a climate of fear. You may not consciously be afraid, but in the last 18 months or so, really, how much more often is the first thing that we read speaking to Christians here is the latest news regarding COVID rather than a devotional or the Bible? Or we skim said devotional or the Bible and jump straight to COVID. Now, I'm not saying this from a old and now position because I'm as guilty as the next person of behaving like that and falling into that trap. But here's some statistics for you. We all love statistics, they can be manipulated into whatever you want, but some statistics from 2020. They're cited from a number of sources. Um, they're just on my screen there, beside my book. Go buy my book. Uh, a link to all of that will be below. So here's some statistics. The leading cause of death, 2020, was ischemic, can't pronounce it, but heart disease. Leading cause of death. Uh, dementia, second with an average age of 89.1. Rounding out the top five were, if I get this right, cerebrovascular disease, lung cancer, and chronic lower respiratory diseases. That's the top five. 55 deaths due to influenza. Um, influenza and pneumonia dropped to the 17th. Leading cause of death down from ninth in 2019. Uh, the ranking of influenza and pneumonia is obviously influenced by the flu season. Um, suicide was the 15th leading cause of death with an average age of 43.5. And the one that we're all afraid of, but is real. Don't misquote me, COVID was the 38th leading cause of death. 898 deaths recorded in 2020 with an average age of 86. Now, hold on to the last two that I mentioned. So suicide being the 15th uh, leading cause of death in Australia, average age of 43.5, COVID being the 38th leading cause of death, average age of 86. Now, if I gave you that information on its own and said governments, state and federal, have poured billions of dollars at all levels, billions of dollars, into focusing on the prevention of one of those. What would you guess? 
would your guess be the 38th leading cause of death with an average age of 86 or the 15th leading cause of death with an average age of 43.5? When presented with those two numbers, those two statistics, and told that billions of dollars have been poured into looking after one of them, I know where my guess would be. I wonder what yours would be. So when everything is God online, nothing is. See, fear is great for selling news, and the media has run with it. Fear is also great for the election. Several historic precedences and politicians have run with that. And before you tell me to go and put my Tim Foyle hat on, Here's a quote from the Queensland Premier. If you are unvaccinated and the virus comes into your community, the virus will hunt you out. I think that's so hyperbolic, I'm going to say that again. If you are unvaccinated and the virus comes into your community, the virus will hunt you out. Well, I don't know about that, Premier. I'd suggest that keeping people under the perpetual fear of lockdown or exclusion for the unvaccinated, I'd suggest mental health problems will hunt you down, to use your sort of language. Now, if you want to make a medical decision, about your own vaccination status, because vaccines are great, they're wonderful, you want it, go get it. Uncools. If you want to make that decision on your own and not be mandated, you're labeled anti vax. That's what you are, you're anti vax. Media proclaims you as anti vax. Precedents. Read any news article. If you don't think that COVID is the black plague or Ebola or anything that has a mortality rate of greater than 10%, say, you're a COVID denier. Precedents? Go read any news article from the past 18 months. So, media and politicians been playing upon people's emotions and seeking to keep them afraid. What does that do to levels of anxiety? And in adults, it makes it rise. That's not a difficult connection to make. There are businesses that will never reopen through no fault of their own. Yeah, children have been told for the past 18 months or so, that they are in grave danger, that their families are in grave danger, that if they visit their grandparents, that they'll be responsible for the deaths of their grandparents. They'll be to blame. What's that do to levels of anxiety in children? Back to Ruby. You know, I loved that dog. I loved that dog. I hated every second of being there to, to do that. It gave me no pleasure. In fact, the opposite. I have still had sleepless nights since. I will have several sleepless nights going forward. I will never forget that. I'm haunted by the words of someone very wise. Or an oats, it was no such thing as a bad dog, just a bad owner. I guess that's where I feel like I belong at the moment, that kind of. But what wasn't I able to do? However much she relied on me, I was not able to relieve her of her anxiety. Which brings me the Christian part and some scripture. First Peter 5, 
verses 6 to 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything but everything by prayer and supplication with thanks, given that your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And one of my favourite passages of Scripture, I think you love it, 28 to 30, this is a go to it in the Go to to me, go to for me. This is why I go to it. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do I think that God wanted businesses to close and for people to lose their livelihoods over the past eight months. No, no idea. Go and read about Joseph in the Old Testament. However, politicians and chief health officers on $600,000 salaries have forced businesses to close people to lose their livelihoods, rates of anxiety to rise, hold them accountable at the next prospective state election. We are happy with what has happened and vote for something different. However, what I do know is that the word of God is infallible, unchanging, the same yesterday, the same today, the same tomorrow. The writers of the gospel Quote Jesus, the writer of Matthew quotes Jesus saying, Come to him if you are weary and burdened, or heavy laden, as the translation I read. Why? He will give you rest. The writers of the New Testament letters repeat often, often repeat from phrases about casting anxieties upon him. Why? Because he cares. And let your requests be known. Yeah, I'll leave you with this. This is not a new normal. It is not normal to force masks upon healthy 12-year-old children. It is not normal to scan an app on your phone every time you want to enter a building. It is not normal to force medical procedures upon someone and proof of said medical procedure on people so they can eat at a restaurant. It is not normal to be apart from people, friends, family, etc. These rules are inconsistently applied. Goalposts change weekly. So politicians, media and the like can maintain the fearful status quo. I know my tinfoil hat's not on, but Daniel Andrews did get fined for not obeying a mask mandate in Melbourne. So it obviously doesn't matter that much. What doesn't change? The word of God doesn't change. He will give you rest. He will give you peace. He cares for you. Don't reach for the COVID statistics first thing in the morning. Reach for your Bible. Don't let the first conversation you have with someone you work with about the latest restrictions, the latest mandates, the latest numbers, the latest statistics, etc. Let it be about God. Let it be about scripture. 
testify to what God is doing in your lives. Until next week. God bless.